I'm Dell. In 2006, we moved back to North Dakota from Washington, where I was a medical marijuana patient, and I became a medical marijuana activist. I'd studied the plant for more than 35 years, and I came here to let people know the information I had. Today, I'm going to talk about the dispensaries in North Dakota. These dispensaries have their own criteria for training the pharmacists within their jurisdiction. <coughs> Excuse me. I had a lady call me uh, a few days ago. She was in her 60s, had severe arthritis all over, could not take opiates, and is allergic to most of the other medications that they've tried to put her on. This lady went and got her medical marijuana card, which was kind of a chore anyway, and went to the dispensary to get their recommendations and she had never had any dealings with medical cannabis or cannabis of any kind. This dispensary saw fit after they knew that she had no experience with cannabis to sell her two syringes of high potency THC cannabis oil and a vial of 10, 10 milligram high potency THC gel caps. When she got home, she took one of the gel caps. It didn't kick in for about five hours. Well, sometimes when you eat uh, cannabis or when you eat THC, uh, it doesn't kick in right away. Uh, even regular opiates or anything else that you take orally, uh, I'll say eat because there's other ways of taking it orally. We'll get into that in another video. Tinctures, by, for example. She took one of the gel caps and it didn't kick in for five hours. Once it did kick in, she was seeing tracers. She was dizzy. She was nauseous. She had an absolute horrendous night. She couldn't sleep all night. Even when she closed her eyes, she saw things, colors, and oh, that's what cannabis does. Okay, when you eat it, if you overdo the THC, you will hallucinate. You will see tracers. You will see uh, bright, vivid colors. Things will just pop out at you. You get dizzy. You get disoriented. Okay, it's you can't die from eating cannabis, smoking cannabis, or anything. But boy, you sure can feel like you're gonna. Okay, it puts a fear into you. There's no reason she should have been prescribed or recommended these high potency oils. Okay, none whatsoever. These people had no idea what they were doing. If they knew, and she told me, she told them she had never dealt with cannabis before in her life. And if she told them that, and they recommended oil, two syringes. These syringes of oil are expensive. The, the gel caps are just as expensive. She probably spent almost $200 on this stuff. And she can't use it. It's too high potency for her. She's going to have to keep it, and she can't sell it. They won't take it back, and she can't use it. So what does she do with it? Now, I'm telling you, we need to really crack down on who's recommending this stuff to people. They're, quote, unquote, and I quote that because I consider them pharmacists, pharmacists, 
if you're going to recommend something to someone, you better damn well know what you're doing. I don't care what medication it is. It's still medication. Anyway, this is something that I'm going to keep looking into because I wrote them an email and they got back to me. The health department actually and Jason Wall got back to me and uh, I wrote him a letter dear custodian of cannabis health care okay this was the health department of North Dakota and his email address is an nd.gov so I imagine he's probably one of the ones in higher up position or at least within the organization to say something to the dispensary and what he wrote me back was thank you for your email an individual working at a dispensary is to complete the training program as required by the specific dispensary so there is no blanket training for any of these dispensaries in North Dakota. And that, my friends, needs to change. We need tests for these people. We need to judge their capabilities and knowledge on this plant. And if they don't have the knowledge, we need to train them. These 20-something kids that they have working, and the Williston one, anyway, when I went down there, I saw nothing but 20-somethings in there working in there, okay? Now, it seems to me some of us old-timers that have been into this situation for a long time and learned a lot about this cannabis, all right, probably need to be the ones doing the training. Anyway, he says, I will reach out to representatives of the dispensary regarding the information outlined below. So at least they got my information and they're going to send it off and whether there be repercussions or not, I don't know. But this is something that we're going to have to deal with as medical cannabis patients in North Dakota. And that's untrained pharmacists in the dispensaries. Have a nice day.